good morning dear students today we are going to do our chapter number 7 the necklace from our book footprints without feet this chapter the necklace is written by guy d mopassant he is a french author and this chapter is a story about a lady whose name is matilda she is invited to a grand party she has a beautiful dress but no jewelry so she borrows a necklace from her friend and then she loses it now what happens next in the story we'll read the story and we'll come to know before i start with the reading of the chapter let me tell you that through this chapter the author has tried to give us a lesson a teaching that we should be happy with what we have we should not be selfish and expect too many things which we do not have and feel dissatisfied or sorrowful throughout the day rather we should enjoy feel satisfied and feel very happy and contented with all with whatever we have so let me begin with the chapter she was one of those pretty young ladies born as if through an error of destiny into a family of clerks now the chapter the lesson begins with the explanation the description of a girl who is matilda and we are talking about a girl matilda she was very pretty she looked very beautiful and she was a young lady but she was born as if through an error of destiny error of destiny mistake of a destiny into a family of clerks she was born in a middle class family she was very really beautiful she was very really young she had no dowry no hopes no means of becoming known loved and married by a man either rich or distinguished so she had no dowry dowry means no amount of property or money from her parents therefore she has no hopes she wanted to become known she wanted to be popular but she could not do that she could not even marry a rich man so therefore she allowed herself to marry a petty clerk petty is a small trivial clerk in the office of the board of education so she married to a man who was a clerk in the board of education in the office of the board of education she was simple but she was unhappy she was simple but she was not leading a happy life so she kept unhappy the whole time she suffered incessantly feeling herself born for all delicacies and luxuries she suffered incessantly means constantly never ending and she feeling herself she kept on feeling herself born for all delicacies and luxuries she felt that she was born to have all the beautiful fine luxurious things in her life but though she was not having all such beautiful fine luxurious things therefore she suffered every time so she suffered from the poverty of her apartment apartment is house the shabby walls that is the poor condition of the walls and the worn chairs all these things tortured and angered her so she lived in a poverty stricken condition she was poor she has uh, she doesn't have a rich beautiful house and the condition of the walls was very poor she was not having very beautiful antique furniture in the house and all these things disturbed her a lot when 
she seated herself for dinner opposite her husband who uncovered the tureen with a delighted air saying oh the good pot pie i know nothing better than that so once she was sitting on the dining table with her husband and he uncovered the tureen tureen is she, he uncovered a dish and uh, with a delighted air very happily and he was so happy to see a good pot pie a kind of a dish and he told that he knew nothing better than that at that time also she would think of elegant dinners of shining silver she thought of the exquisite food served in marvelous dishes but she was not happy with the dinner with the dishes she was having in her family she served to her husband at that time also she was thinking of the graceful wonderful dinners in the wonderful marvelous bright uh, extraordinary dishes cutlery and she had neither frocks nor jewels nothing and she loved only those things so she was not having beautiful frocks jewelry anything of that sort nor even a wonderful exquisite kind of a cutlery to serve those dishes so she used to be sad and angry very easily she used to get upset very easily she had a rich friend a schoolmate at the convent who she did not like to visit she suffered so much when she returned so at the convent at her school she had a very rich friend but she does not like to visit her because whenever she would visit her she would become upset when she returned back after meeting her and the whole day she would wept she would cry and she uh, her day was full of despair and disappointment she would feel very bad on that day and she was never satisfied and become very nervous or worried on that time that why she has met her that friend one evening what happened her husband returned elated bearing in his hand a large envelope so her husband returned elated very happy in his mood and he was holding a large envelope here he said here is something for you so he was very happy he gave some envelope to matilda and she quickly drew out a printed card on which were inscribed these words which words see the minister of public instruction and madam george ramponio ask the honor of mr and madam loisel's company monday evening january 18 at the minister's residence so this was an invitation card which was sent for them so instead of being delighted as her husband had hoped she threw the invitation spitefully upon the table murmuring what do you suppose i want with that but her husband mr loisel was hoping that she would be very happy on getting that invitation but on the contrary to it what happened she threw the invitation spitefully very angrily uh, on the table murmuring murmuring is speaking something in a low sound what do you suppose i want with that she asked her husband what do you think i'll do with this type of invitation but my dearie i thought it would make you happy you never go out and this is an occasion and a fine one everybody wishes one and it is very select not many are given to employees you will see the whole official world there but mr loisel very calmly told her that my dear my dear i thought that you will be very happy on receiving it because you have never gone to such occasions and not all are invited 
so there are very selected persons who are invited in this uh, occasion and you will be able to see my official world there and you will feel very happy she looked at him with an irritated eye and declared impatiently what do you suppose i want i have to wear to such a thing as that so she became irritated at that and very impatiently she asked him that what do you suppose that i shall wear at such an occasion such a grand party he thought he had not thought of that he stammered why the dress you wear when we go to the theater it seems very pretty to me and he said that he had not thought about the dress but then he stammered stammered means when you speak something uh, in uh, when you speak something with pauses you are unable to speak properly so he stammered and he told her that the dress which you wear when we go out for a movie looks very beautiful at you so why don't you wear that after that he was silent stupefied in dismay at the sight of his wife weeping he stammered what's the matter what's the matter then he was unable to think he saw that his wife was quite angry she started weeping she became sad and therefore he again stammered that what's the matter with you what's wrong with you by a violent effort she had controlled her vexation and responded in a calm voice wiping her moist cheeks so she has been wiping her moist cheeks she wiped her tears from her moist cheeks she had controlled her vexation the state of being annoyed and in a calm voice she said nothing only i have no dress and consequently i cannot go to this affair give your card to some colleague whose wife is better fitted out than i so she said nothing nothing as such but i do not have a very nice dress to wear on such a party so it is better you give this card to some of your colleagues colleagues are the persons who work with you in the same office so uh, whose wife is better fitted out than i whose wife has better costumes who has better dress than i that is than her he was grieved but answered let us see matilda how much would a suitable costume cost something that would serve for other occasions something very simple but he was a nice man and he was grieved also he was he was feeling sorrowful for her also his intense feelings of sorrow were there and therefore he says okay matilda just tell me that if we buy something very simple and something that you can wear on this occasion what will be uh, it for what will be its price she reflected for some seconds thinking of a sum that she could ask for without bringing with it an immediate refusal and a frightened exclamation from the economical clerk so she thought for a while for a second because she doesn't want that the amount which she would tell her husband after listening to it that neither he refuse nor he got scared because he was a poor clerk and would give her the permission to buy that dress finally she said after thinking for a while she said in a hesitating voice i can't i cannot tell exactly but it seems to me that 400 francs ought to cover it 400 francs francs are the monetary unit in france so she said that i do not know exactly what amount it will be but i think that in 400 francs i could purchase a good costume he turned a little pale for he had saved just this sum to buy a gun 
that he might be able to join some hunting parties the next summer with some friends who went to shoot larks on sunday nevertheless he answered very well i'll give you 400 francs but try to have a pretty dress so he turned a little pale his color was faded yellow colored and he because why did he turn pale at that time because he had already saved those 400 francs that similar amount to purchase a gun because he wanted to join his friends for the hunting and they all used to go to shoot larks larks are the birds on sundays so he also wanted to join them and therefore he was saving the amount to purchase the gun but as though i have told you earlier also that he was a very nice gentleman so therefore he didn't bother about all those things and he was not too selfish to think about himself only so therefore he answered that okay i'll give you 400 francs but try to get a very nice pretty dress for yourself the day of the ball approached and ma'am loisel seemed sad disturbed anxious nevertheless her dress was nearly ready her husband said to her one evening what's the matter with you you have acted strangely for two or three days now children if you have noticed m m e means ma'am ma'am loisel and m loisel means mr loisel so it is in French language that they write it like this, Madam and Mr. So, the day of the ball was approaching so near and one day, the husband asked Ma'am Loisel that why are you behaving so strangely from the last two or three days? Isn't the dress ready? And she responded, I am vexed not to have a jewel, nothing to adorn myself with. I shall have such a poverty-stricken look. I would prefer not to go to this party. So, she at that time responded that I am vexed. I am very much annoyed. I, my dress is ready, but I am having no jewelry to wear with it, to adorn myself with, to decorate myself with. And therefore, if I will not wear any jewelry, I will look so poor. And therefore, I do not prefer to go to this party. He replied, you can wear some natural flowers in this season. They look very chic. Very chic means they look very elegant and stylish. And you look very beautiful in those natural flowers. She was not convinced. No, she replied. There is nothing more humiliating than to have a shabby ear in the midst of rich women in the midst means in the middle of in between those rich women i just do not want to wear those natural flowers i look very shabby i look very ugly and i'll not look good in those natural flowers she was not convinced with the idea of putting those natural flowers she said that it is going to be humiliating insulting for me to wear such natural flowers then her husband cried out how stupid we are go and find your ma'am um, go and find your friend ma'am forestier and ask her to lend you her jewels sorry children i have left two lines let me go back no it's okay sorry so then her husband told her that we are so stupid why don't you go to your rich friend ma'am forest here and ask her to give you some jewels she uttered a cry of joy it's true she said i had not thought of that the next day she took herself to her friend's house and related her story of distress ma'am forestier went to her closet took out a large jewel case brought it opened it and said choose my dear so the very next day she was 
she went to her ma friend madam forestier she was full of joy at that time that she could get some very good jewelry from madam forestier and she told madam forestier her story that she was not having the pretty jewelry to wear at that party but her friend was a nice lady she went to her closet that is her cupboard and she took out a very big large jewel case out of the cupboard she opened it in front of her and told her to choose whichever jewelry she wanted to wear she saw at first some bracelets then a collar of pearls then a venetian cross of gold and jewels of admirable workmanship so madam loisel saw many things bracelets collar of pearls venetian cross all were admirable that is they all were so pretty so beautiful she tried the jewels before the glass in front of the mirror hesitated but could neither decide to take them nor leave them then she asked have you nothing more but she was unable to decide she wanted to have a look on more jewels which she was having and therefore she could not decide whether she should take those jewelry or not and then she asked madam forestier if she was having something else why yes look for yourself i do not know what will please you and she was such a nice kind hearted lady such a good friend that she told madam loisel to go and find out whatever she wants to wear and whatever pleases her so suddenly she discovered in a black satin box a superb necklace of diamonds her hands trembled as she took it out she placed it about her throat against her dress and was ecstatic then she asked in a hesitating voice full of anxiety could you lend me this only this so when she has opened the almira the cupboard at that time she found a black satin box over there a satin is a cloth which is very bright and shining and has a silky effect and there lied a superb a very magnificent diamond necklace her hands were shaking and she took it out she placed that necklace on her neck and she was ecstatic she was extremely happy joyful and she wanted to have that necklace so very hesitantly she asked her friend if she could lend her that diamond necklace why yes certainly so the friend told her that yes certainly sure she can have that necklace also so she fell upon the neck of her friend embraced her with passion and then went away with her treasure so mr uh, madam forestier when she gave her the diamond necklace madam loisel felt so much happy that she embraced her she held her friend closely in her arms hugged her with passion and she went away with that diamond necklace the day of the ball arrived now finally the day of that ball that grand party has arrived and ma'am loisel was a great success was a great success means she looked so beautiful she was the prettiest of all elegant gracious smiling and full of joy now she looked the prettiest the most beautiful among all the ladies and she was so graceful she looked so gracious elegant and she was full of joy on that day because she won she was looking in the same manner as she wanted to be and all the men noticed her asked her name and wanted to be presented now all the men over there wanted to have a dance with her in that ball party all were asking her name and she felt very happy she danced with enthusiasm 
intoxicated with pleasure is filled with pleasure happiness enthusiasm she danced with all her interest thinking of nothing but all this admiration this victory so complete and sweet to her heart so the way she wanted to look like in the same manner she was looking she was admired by all she was given respect and was welcomed by all all were looking at her beauty and therefore she felt so complete on that day she went home towards 4 o'clock in the morning her husband had been half asleep in one of the little salons since midnight with three other gentlemen whose wives were enjoying themselves very much and on that day on that ball day she went home at around 4 o'clock in the morning but before that her husband had already been half asleep in one of the little salons salons is a reception room in the large house and uh, since midnight and there were three other gentlemen also who were waiting for their wives and they all were sleeping in that salon he threw around her shoulders the modest wraps they had carried whose poverty clashed with the elegance of the ball costume she wished to hurry away in order not to be noticed by the other women who were wrapping themselves in rich furs so what happened then while she was about to leave the party in the morning at 4 o'clock her husband has given her has spread that um, has spread that uh, wrap which he has already bought because it was quite chilly at that time and she threw that modest wrap because she doesn't like that wrap because the other women who were very rich were wrapping themselves in the rich furs and her fur her wrap was not extremely beautiful so she wanted to run away from there she therefore she hurried away that nobody should notice that she was carrying such a modest wrap loisel detained her wait he said i am going to call a cab but she would not listen and descended the steps rapidly she uh, when they were in the street they found no carriage and they began to seek for one hailing the coachman whom they saw at a distance so what happened loisel told her to wait for some time let he call some cab but she doesn't want to wait and she descended that is she fall downwards that is she started going moving ahead very rapidly hurriedly because she doesn't want that anyone should look at her in such a wrap and because she tried to show to pretend that she was a rich lady and therefore she started running and she didn't wait even for a cab so he began to seek mr loisel began to seek to find out a coachman a driver of a horse drawn carriage and he saw one and they walked along towards the river hopeless and shivering but she was not wait, but she was not ready to wait for the cab for the coachman so she walked along uh with her husband towards the river they were quite hopeless to get any of the carriage at that time and they were shivering they were shaking with the cold finally they found one of those old carriages that one sees in paris after nightfall after nightfall is at the onset of the night the old type of carriages which were found in paris they were able to find one it took them as far as their door and they went wearily up to their apartment wearily means they were very tired and that um, that coachman that cab old carriage took them to their door at their apartment and they were quite tired by that time and it was all over for her and on his part he remembered that he would have to be at the office by 10 o'clock so now the ball was over and all was over for madam loisel as well but for mr loisel he remembered 
that now he has to reach his office by 10 o'clock so he has a limited time to take rest she removed the wraps from her shoulders before the glass for a final view of herself in her glory suddenly she uttered a cry her necklace was not around her neck and while she was removing her wrap in front of the mirror to have a final last view of herself looking so beautiful so glorified in front of the mirror she suddenly noticed that the necklace was not there in her neck and she uttered a cry she cried loudly that the necklace was missing with this i have finished with part 1 i hope you have understood all and in the part 2 we'll re- we'll do the remaining chapter thank you for listening to me i'm your teacher sumati verma